What's up, everyone? Y'all still there? Y'all still there with me? What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the exhausting life of Dr. Curtis O. I apologize, I apologize, I apologize for taking this long to create another video. However, if you know me and you know what I've been going through for the past few weeks, few months, um, then you already know that I just had my son approximately two months ago. He'll be nine weeks tomorrow. And so trying to find that work-life balance has been extremely tough, but I think I now have a schedule moving forward so that I can create content for y'all on a weekly basis. Now, in this video, we're gonna get right into it. Uh, this video here is about hospitalists, what a hospitalist is, um, how our schedule is set up, as well as how much money we make, as I'm sure a lot of young people wanna know how much money we make. So to get started, what a hospitalist is, is we are an internist. We, there are usually internists, internal medicine doctors. There are also some hospitalists that are family medicine doctors, but what a hospitalist is, is that we work specifically in the hospital in an inpatient setting. So when you graduate from residency as an internal medicine doctor, you can go one of two ways. If you don't wanna specialize, you can become a primary care physician where you work in the clinic, or you can be a hospitalist where you're working in the hospital. So how do you see a hospitalist? You see a hospitalist if, for, for example, if a patient comes into the ER, for example, for a stroke, when an ER doctor works the patient up and finds out that the patient has a stroke or stroke-like symptoms, at that point in time, the patient needs to be admitted into the hospital. Who the patient gets admitted to is a hospitalist more times than not. So at that point, in, from that point on, as a hospitalist, we take that patient, we admit the patient into the hospital, do what we need to do to get them better and get them discharged home. So pneumonia, for, for instance, if a patient comes in, an 89 year old lady or 89 year old male comes in with pneumonia, we take over, we figure out what's going on. If we don't already know from what the ER has already done, we place them on the appropriate management and we discharge them from the hospital in stable condition, whether it's home, rehab, whatever the case may be. So that is what a hospitalist is. Now, with regards to what we can and can't do, you have certain hospitalists that love to do procedures. So we can do procedures such as LPs, which is lumbar puncture. We can do intubation. We can do arthrocentesis. We can do uh, pleurocentesis. It, 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 we can do a variety of different things, but it all depends on what the hospitalist wants to do. In this day and age, with how the reimbursements are, you're not gonna see as many hospitalists or internists nowadays doing procedures as they used to in the, uh, in the past. Um, we tend to now consult different specialties to get those done, whether it's orthocentesis or orthopedic surgery. Intubation, either, whether if it's intubation, then obviously the patient's being intubated for, so, for one reason or another. So they're either already intubated from the ER or they're crashing on the floor where the intensivist comes to ER doctor, or we can do it. Some of us are comfortable doing it, some others are not. So we are pretty much the quarterback of the team when they're admitted into the hospital. If it is a patient that's coming with chest pain or a stroke, we consult the cardiologist, we consult the neurologist, we consult whoever the case is to help us facilitate the care to improve the patient's condition so that we can discharge them. So that is what a hospitalist is in a nutshell. So again, a patient comes to the ER, they are sick enough that they need to be admitted. The ER doctor will call us. We then see the patient at that moment in time, evaluate the patient and then figure out what needs to be done to get them better, to get them home. So if we can handle ourselves, we can handle ourselves, which a lot of times I will tend to do as long as within the scope of my of my, uh, the scope of my uh, specialty. But if I need to get a consultant involved, I, by all means, I will do that. Um, Cause obviously I'm not taking a patient to the, to the cath lab. I'm, no, I'm not bronching up, I'm not doing a bronchoscopy such as a pulmonologist. Uh, so I will get them involved if need be and then try to get them home if possible. Whether it's home, it's again, inpatient rehab, skilled nurse facility, whatever the case is, our goal is to get them better as fast as possible as safe as possible home. So that's what a hospitalist is. So as you can see, a hospitalist 
versus a primary care doc that's in the clinic, we deal with critical cases, whereas a primary care doc does not deal with that. We still would deal with diabetes, we still deal with all of these other things, but we deal with it on a critical level where a primary care doc will see a patient and if they feel a patient, if they feel that a patient needs to be admitted, they will send the patient to the ER so that they can be evaluated. Back in the day, if you were a primary care doc, a lot of primary care docs were seeing patients in the hospital, but nowadays with how healthcare is and how the system is set up, it's tough to do both where you're a primary care doc and a hospitalist. But that was a common thing back then. But now it's become it's become less it's become less common to see that in a hospital. Um, and our our specialty has become more competitive, more attractive. So how is a hospital schedule set up? So 90% of hospitals across the country have it done one particular way seven on seven off meaning that for seven days straight you're in a hospital and then you're off for seven days you do have certain hospitals certain places in the country where it may not be seven on seven off it may be five days here four days here 14 days straight there's so many variations but the majority of hospital schedule is seven days on seven days off so when you hear that you think wow seven days straight that sounds like you're going to burn out that sounds very tedious that sounds very stressful and at times it can be but you got to understand that when you're after your seven days you are off for seven days meaning that when you're off for seven days you are off the clock no pages no responsibilities for the most part you are off so every other week is pretty much a vacation which is why I love the schedule so much every other week I am on vacation I can take off and do what I want I can travel or I can just pick up a lot of shifts. It, it depends. So you got certain hospitalists that will take that week off and just relax every other week for a full year. And they're and they're content with that. And there's no and there's no problem with that whatsoever. And then you got certain hospitalists that want to do something on their weeks off. Business minded people, people who have other interests. And that is someone like me. So I can use my week off and just relax, kick it with the family, kick it with the friends. Um, or I can use that week and put in work, make more money, secure the bag. So many, so many different ways that you can use your weeks off to your advantage. And so that's how the schedule is for hospitals across the country is seven on, seven off. Now on your seven on, you are pretty much on from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That is typically what you see. So your pager or your phone is pretty much active at 7 a.m. and it turns off at 7 p.m. That's how our hospital is set up. That's how a lot of hospital setups are set up. But again, there's different variations across the country. You got some that are on for 24 hours straight. Um, you got some that are a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter. Um, it just depends. But normally you see, or commonly you see where you're on for 12 hours. And again, it's not necessarily that you're in a hospital for 12 hours. It just means that you have to have your phone on for 12 hours so that nurses and whoever case case managers, whoever, uh, whoever that may be can reach you. Um, and so for me personally, again, the seven on sounds daunting, but it's really not, especially on the weekends. Weekends are a little bit more chill. You have more time. It's, it's usually lighter in the hospital. So um, you usually can get through the weekend and kind of take a break, take kind of take a breather. So when you start your seven days on, again, this is different for every hospital, but our particular hospital, you can start your, your, your first day on any day of the week. You have a partner um, that you work with. So for me personally, I start on Tuesday and I finish off on Monday. You got some people that start on Wednesday, finish off on Tuesday. You got some people that start on Saturday, finish off on Friday. As long as you get your seven days, that's all that matters. Cause in the very, the next week you're off. And that's why I love the schedule so much. So for me personally, why I chose Tuesday to Monday is me personally, I hate Mondays. Mondays for the start of the week, it just feels like a long week ahead. And so once Tuesday gets going, for me personally, it feels like, okay, now the week is gone. So if I start on Tuesday, then it's pretty much me getting through Tuesday to Friday. The weekends for me are more chill. So I don't, I'm not really stressed at all uh, about the weekends for the most part. And then Monday, since that's my last day, it's my last day. So for me, that's a Friday. So for me mentally, Tuesday to Monday makes more sense. On top of that, because of our job as hospitalists, our job as hospitalists is to get people home. So discharges, discharges, discharges. And so for me and my partner, a lot of times patients can sit over the weekend ready for discharge on Monday. So for us, to start on Monday and then uh, start on Monday, 
you could you could be dealing with a lot of discharges for patients you really don't know too well. So for me and my partner, we have it done. We have it perfectly for us. So when I'm when I my last day on Monday, I can discharge the patients home. Come Tuesday, my partner comes in with a clean slate to an extent. Now with regards to your schedule, some people may ask, is it only seven days that you can do? You can do more. Um, at our particular hospital, for a moment in time, you could pick up a lot of shifts. Um, nowadays, it's probably not that way because the market is becoming so saturated. Um, the hospitals are become fully staffed. So picking up extra shifts uh, to supplement your income um, doesn't happen as often at your hospital. Now, if you're in a smaller city, in a rural, a rural town, those areas you could probably pick up more shifts. So it really depends. For me, last year, I, wa I wasn't doing seven on, seven off. I was doing 11 days straight, 12 days straight, with three days off, four days off, and that's how my schedule was. And I could do that at the time because I was, obviously I'm still young, but on top of that, I did not have a kid. I didn't have a baby that I had to come to and help my, my wife out to take care of. So I could pick up all those extra shifts to supplement my income. Um, so there's so many ways that you can go about changing your schedule, but for us, that's what makes the hospitalist gig so enticing, so attractive, is because there's so many ways that you can go about uh, managing your schedule. Seven on, seven off, five days, four days, it just depends. Uh, but again, every hospital is different, but that is pretty much the standard across the country is seven on, seven off. Now with regards to holidays, every hospital is different, every contract is different. Um, you got certain hospitals that will give you hospital pay, you got some of them that won't. Um, it just depends. Uh, for our particular hospital, um, if my week on falls on Christmas, then it's just, it is what it is. But because me and my partner work so well, um, I may have Thanksgiving off, but I'll work Christmas and vice versa with him. So there's so many different variations, so many ways you can do it, but for holiday purposes, um, you can have holiday pay where the hospital will pay you for that. And you got somewhere it really doesn't matter because again, every other week you're on vacation. Um, and so that right there is very lucrative, very attractive to a lot of a lot of, uh, of students, residents that are coming out of medical school and residency. I'm sure some of y'all are probably still watching this video. I'm hoping, I'm hoping y'all are enjoying this content, but I'm sure some of y'all are still watching this video because y'all want to know how much does a hospitalist make? Especially for students, for medical students and, and people in residency who are now looking at different specialties and so on and so forth, wanna know how much do does a hospitalist make? This is what it is. So it varies, it varies from coast to coast. Um, but a hospitalist generally makes around 250, 260 before bonuses, before incentives, before RVUs and all that stuff. Um, and so it doesn't, for other specialties, it may sound like, okay, you are, you're not making as much as another, like cardiologist or GI, or whatever the case is, but you gotta realize the base, is, the base salary is 250, 260, but you gotta realize that it's you're only working half the year. One week on, one week off. So if you're okay with making a 250, 260, which a lot of people are, and again, this is before, this is before incentive, this is uh, before bonuses, which can shoot your 250 to 260 up to 280 to 300, a lot of people are okay with, with that. And that's fine, that's cool. You know, a lot of people are content with that and happy and so on and so forth. But you understand that if you're making a 250 to 260, you have the other half of the year to supplement your income. So if you're a business minded, there's so many different ways that you can supplement your income in the health field or even outside of the healthcare if you got other interests. So for me personally, you know, before bonuses and incentives and all of that stuff, you know, in Houston, you know, the the average salary in Houston is about 250 to 260. That's across the city. If you go into rural areas, that can shoot up to 300. There's sometimes even 340. It just depends on where you're at because certain hospitals have to be a little bit more attractive to get hospitalists there because they may be understaffed. So those particular hospitals, you can make a lot more money than you can in bigger cities where, where these hospitals don't have to throw a lot of money at doctors because you're already in a big city. So for me, I'm cool with making what I make um, you know, at our hospital because I know that I have other endeavors. I have other opportunities and things that I want to supplement my income. And so I'm fine with that. So you know, whether if you're in New York, the income there may be a little bit higher than what's in Houston. The the ink the I mean the salary in New York may be a little bit higher than what's in Houston and in California may be a little higher than what's in Houston. But the reason for that for the most part is 
the cost of living. The cost of living in New York and, and Cali is crazy compared to Texas. So you may get paid a little more on, the, on, on both sides of the coast, but at the end of the day, you're also spending more for housing. Whereas Texas and Houston, as you know, the cost of living is way cheaper. Uh, so that is the so that is the salary for hospitalists across the country. Again, it can range from 250. I've seen some as high as 340, which I've been offered. But those were in towns that I did not want to be in. I wanted to be home, um, and so I was able to find a perfect gig back in Houston where I'm making what I want to make, um, and still able to pursue other endeavors that will suffer my income um, as much as I once so that's it for this video i hope the information that i provided for y'all was to y'all's liking i hope y'all appreciated this content again i apologize for not giving y'all any content for a while but again you know i just have i just had a son he's barely nine weeks old um and it was gonna take some time to get adjusted to a schedule that works for me and works for the little one works for my family so i'm back on we're back at it every week i'm trying to drop a new video for y'all um again if y'all have any questions drop those uh, in the comments below, like, share, you know what to do. Um, I talked about what a hospitalist makes in the next couple of videos with regards to medicine. I will touch bases on what's called locum, L-O-C-U-M. Um, that's also about the cost, the salary and everything and what a locum hospitalist is, um, as well as other specialties. And I'm also getting another video about the business opportunities that you can get into with whether it's being a hospitalist or primary care physician or even specialty so i got some videos coming up um, in the works i will get those out to y'all but for now that's it um, again y'all know what to do i'll see y'all next time god bless